At the moment I'm joined by Thomas Field. Thomas is the composer who did all the music for We're Family Now. <laughs> so Tom, thanks for having a little chat to us. First of all, why did you help me out with this film? It was, it was such a big ask and it could have been an absolute nightmare for you. Well, I suppose for anyone that doesn't know, um, I'd worked with uh, your friend Thomas before um, and he'd mentioned that he was going to pass my name on to some elusive figure, which turned out to be you. Partly just the fact that it was feature length, because I'd never done anything like that before. So that was really exciting. And then once I got to see the film, I was just amazed by um, the production standard in all aspects, really, all of the acting, cinematography, everything. Yeah, so it was just nice to be asked to work on something so... Um, so well produced and my kind of style that I kind of always sink into is big bombastic action music so it was nice to be asked to do something with a bit more heart <laughs> looked at a story um, told in Darwin, Australia. It's a pretty far away place, pretty close to the other side of the world for you. Um, but what do you think of, of Darwin in the Northern Territory? Um, well, uh, yeah, my, my kind of understanding of it has basically been completely from y your film. <laughs> um, so, I mean, just looks like a very, looks a lot, a lot warmer than where I am. There's some, there's yeah. some really like beautiful kind of scenery and stuff and the way you've you've captured it um particularly uh the beach and I remember really like luscious green pastures I don't know if you've you've treated them but they, they look really nice <laughs> we actually shot the film in our what we call our wet season so in Darwin we don't have um a winter or autumn summer and spring we have a dry season and a rainy season, a wet season. Oh, okay. So we shot that in the in the wet season at the height of um, when all the clouds are building up and all the rain's coming. So it's very hot, but you get um, a lot of really vibrant um, foliage, and that's that's probably the green pastures and stuff you see. Was that something you kind of intentionally planned out then? It, it was, yeah. But um, it's it's probably one of the worst times of the year to actually physically film because it's so hot and humid. Um, but it looks beautiful. <laughs> now, still staying on places, Humpty Doo is a pretty prominent place in the film. Um, it starts in Humpty Doo and then towards the end of the film we make our way back to Humpty Doo. Um, and I imagine your idea of the place is very much formed by our film as well. Um, but a few of the tracks you've made, um, you've gone above and beyond in terms of the story behind. Yeah, so for one of the kind of pivotal scenes in the film, I know I wanted um, like a, a lyrical chant um, in a way. Um, and I didn't want to just kind of pluck random words out of thin air. So I wanted something um, that wasn't English um, and that kind of reflected the the core of the film so I did a did a bit of a Google um, and found that um, apparently Humpty Doo comes from an Aboriginal um, word or a couple of Aboriginal words Umdi Doo and Undid I think which um, mean kind of resting place the amount of what you've put into that <laughs> like when I heard about that and the song too the song is beautiful as well but speaking of beautiful things fantastic segue um, there are quite a few beautiful people in this film um, <laughs> <laughs> are there any characters in the film that whilst working on it uh, you, you feel like you've garnered a particular affection for or, or any character you feel a strong connection to um so, yeah, I mean, as I was working on it, I felt I got to know them. I suppose Paul in particular, he's kind of a similar age to me um, and related things in the film that were happening to me kind of, I don't know, yeah, I felt a kind of affection and, and link towards him. And 
Um, I think Esther as well. I've got like younger cousins and and older sisters, so that kind of averaged out into um, her character. You got um, a father? I don't have a dad. What about mum? I don't have a mum. Got a cousin? Do you have a favourite track from the soundtrack? Uh, a particular track that you're most proud of or, or happy with the way it turned out? Well, yeah, I've kind of got two for for two different reasons. One is essentially the last track of the film, minus the credits, which is a rearrangement of a previous track. Um, but it was kind of... I mean, you, you actually suggested to do a rearrangement of it um, for this scene, and up until that point, we had something else, and it was kind of... It was working, but... It didn't quite have the same impact, and then using this rearrangement kind of called back to to previous previous moments. Um, and then another one was um, during a kind of I'd say a a happiness high point <laughs> in the film, because I think it was one of the later ones I did, and I wasn't quite sure what to do, and I'd kind of I'd re re um, redone the main theme so many times. Um, that I thought it'd be good to have something new, and then when when Natalie ca came in and and played the violin on that, um, it just put a massive smile on my face because it, it's quite an, an uplifting track, and then the the joy of hearing something you've composed performed was just brilliant. So it'd be those two. So you play the piano uh, yeah. and the guitar. Uh, is what else do you did you play as part of this soundtrack? So double bass is my main instrument, actually. Oh um, wow! Okay, yeah. So there was there was some of me playing that in there. Yeah. And yeah, there's there's some acoustic guitar in there, uh, a bit of harmonica, a bit of ukulele, which I tried to make sound like a mandolin, but <laughs> <laughs> and I oh I tried to play some cello. I don't play the cello, but um, my mum does, so I borrowed her cello and and yeah. attempted, but uh, the, a lot of editing went into the, that. I think that's all of them. And then uh, Natalie on violin and electric violin. What about your family and friends? What did they think you were doing for the whole time? <laughs> so my family um, and my friends at university as well, they knew um, that I'd worked for for people in Australia before. Um, yeah, so they knew it was kind of um, bubbling away and occasionally I'd play um, them demos of what I was doing and they know this is what I, I want to kind of go into um, and I suppose they've, they've gotten used to me um, uh, being in my room with my headphones on, making music yeah. and uh, setting mics up and that sort of thing. I kind of took over our living room for a little bit whilst they were out um, <laughs> to record some piano and stuff. Um, no, yeah, they were... I think they're, they're just happy to see me have the opportunity to do something that I enjoy so much. That's awesome. This is what you're good at. Don't let it go. Thanks very much, Thomas, for having a, Thank a you. chat to me. And um, I really hope we can work together sometime in the future. Me too.